Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great. And as always, for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're back with our VGC Series 10 content. Finally, it's been a little while on the channel. I've been actually away on holiday for the last week. Um, so I haven't played any Pokemon. I didn't touch Pokemon at all. So I've missed it. Looking forward to getting back into the mix of things this week. Um, and this was actually a team that was planned to be played prior to me going away on holiday but i couldn't get the rental team in time to actually record it but it is from a very good friend of mine johnny hacks is his handle on nine and uh david passed me over this team um and obviously i jumped at the chance because it has got rayquaza in there and uh being one of my favorite all-time legendary pokemon i jumped at the chance to play it so the team as you can see it has got the kind of common features that we're seeing trending through the vgc series 10 um Former at the minute, Incineroar, Rillaboom, Aleki, all kind of common support uh, characters that we're seeing in teams. And then you've got the Stack Attacker, Amoongus kind of combination as well. Give that Trick Room mode as well. The Redirection with the Rage Powder and then the Stack Attacker to kind of just dominate in Trick Room. So it's a really nice team. You've got kind of a fast mode, a uh, speedier mode, I should say, with Rayquaza, Reggie Aleki, Speed Control there as well. Um, and then the Assault Vest gives you a little bit more stability to still hit hard, take advantage of things like extreme speed and the dragon ascent which are probably the two big moves that requires is going to utilize the crunch and there's pretty nice for things like a uh, shadow rider calyrex that we're going to see quite a lot predominantly um, and it's going to be interesting to see how the team kind of fares up against something like zashian because zashian does feel pretty hard into this team and uh, now i haven't spoke to johnny about it but you're going to be relying on things like reggie Alecki, things like incinero to really do the damage that you want to something like zashian which could get a little bit tricky so hopefully we come against a zashian team in today's episode here's the rental code we'll have a couple of games with the team now as we always do and then we'll wrap up with the rental at the end of the episode so hopefully you enjoyed today's episode give johnny a big shout out down below because he is uh he's a great guy and i uh, really appreciate the team that he's passed over so without further ado friends let's get into our first game of today's episode first up today we have a kingdra in dd kyoga in cinero urshfu and politoed team so we've got a full rain team here you got the politoed and the kyoga bringing the rain helping that kingdra with its swift swim ability you got redirection there with the indeedy with the psychic terrain and the follow me uh urshfu i'd imagine it would be the dark type but it may be like the water type as well just taking advantage of the rain and then you got incinero for that intimidate support um now Rayquaza here amazing because it is the one thing that's going to prevent my opponent from taking advantage of the rain getting those water type uh, attack boosts and also taking advantage of the swift swim and things like that so ray is a must here even though it is our restricted we're gonna bring it anyway um i think we probably want to go like reggie Alecki, i think here uh really boom and then do we want incineroar in this battle really or do we want something like a moongus that could come in and just kind of soak up the pressure a little bit double grass feels good um the intimidate might be useful but it's only really useful like if you look at it it's only useful against the incineral like it's not super useful against the urshifu um at all and the rest of the team are all special attackers so i think something like amoongus here could probably perform a little bit better than the incineral in this situation and we don't really need to worry too much about that incineral uh if we need to we can probably turn the rain on and switch rayquaza out if we're worried about a flare blitz coming in and uh doing work against us so i think the big thing here going into this first one is just making sure that we kind of protect rayquaza uh, as best as possible um okay kingdra coming out now naturally rayquaza gonna outspeed kingdra so it just depends on what speed stat johnny's got on this ray whether or not we'll be able to outspeed it or not i mean the thing is though we've got to look at is like ice beam is definitely a threat from the Kyogre, uh, but the Kyogre is threatened by our Regieleki. Uh, the thing is, we can just go Dragon Claw and Electro Web here, and we'll get decent damage onto the Kyogre, and we'll also be able to to slow everything down just to make sure if we are a little bit slower than that Kingdra, we'll be able to to just get that speed stat down a little bit further with the Electro Web, and get rid of the big threat, which is the Kingdra right now. Um, we should take an ice beam from the Kyogre. I'm pretty certain of that. And without the swift swim boost from the the um, the Kingdra, then we'll be all right. Okay, so White Herb Kyogre wants to reset that um, speed drop, but oh my god! Okay, 
That is too close for comfort. I mean, the EVs there are particularly good, Johnny. I will just say, like, uh, hats off for that, taking that ice beam from the Kyogre. Um, but that is a little bit too close for comfort now because if Urshifu comes in or if Incineroar comes in, they both have priority attacks in Fake Out and Aqua Jet that will make quick work of this requires. And we know that the Kyogre is naturally going to outspeed um, something like the rate anyway. So probably want to adjust our board position here. I think something like Amoongus coming onto the field now um, gives us a bit more flexibility. And we probably don't want Rillaboom kind of coming in and taking an Ice Beam because that's probably what we'll see. Although I could imagine we'll probably see something like maybe even like Fake Out into Regieleki and then an Origin Pulse could be the play. So um, we'll go for this. We'll preserve Rayquaza for later on because they may just go for the Ice Beam though, you know. I'll just Fake Out into Ray. And if they do, then at least the Moongus can uh, can catch the Incineroar, which I believe it does have Rocky Helmet. I think it has Rocky Helmet. Let's see, fake out into Lecky. Yeah, makes sense. And there's the Water Spout. The Spout. Full Rain Boost, but not that much HP. So we're sitting all right now because I mean we've got. The ability just to spore into the Incineroar slot and then we can just go for a Thunderbolt. I mean, we could potentially go for a Volt Switch, but I don't feel like it's super necessary here. And the Incineroar is not threatening a knockout onto Aleki. The, the worst thing they can do is protect Kyogre here and go for Parting Shot, um, which we're not going to see. We're just going to see the Kyogre drop. So that makes quick work. And, you know, from like a team that would be pretty threatening with the, the you know, the rain up. Um, with the Kingdra under rain next to a Kyogre, it's pretty offensive, pretty threatening. Um, the ability airlock really kind of comes in pretty clutch in this situation. Um, and it's nice being able to kind of dictate the weather how you want, like for, for this instance, where the Incineroar Flare Blitz would normally, if not, would have been a knockout there with the Flare Blitz. Now it's not really an issue um, where we can ignore it and um, we can just go for... I'll just go for a clear smog and just a thunderbolt i think into the polytoad and that's pretty much game because we still got rillaboom in the back we still got rayquaza in the back rayquaza can come in dragon ascent unintimidated into the incineroar so we're, we're we made pretty easy work of uh, of this first team today but it, it shows how good ray is against these particular kind of weather teams you know um polytoad gonna have that berry is it a wiki it is a citrus. Okay, the skull coming out into um, Reggie. We'll do a nice chunk of damage. No burn. And Incineroar stay asleep. So the clear smog will put it in range for an electro web the next turn. So we can pretty much just switch to... Do we even need to make the switch? Mm. Clear smog. We, we just electro web and clear smog. Save a bit of time because the electro web will be enough. I mean, we could have vault switched out onto the polytoad. Um, makes things a little bit more tricky, I guess, you know, because Incineroar can wake up here and can pick up the knockout onto Regieleki. But as I say, I'm not like massively worried about what my opponent can do from this position with, with the, the Pokemon that they got. You know, they don't really have a way out from here. And this chip's just nice to put it in Dragon Ascent range. Um, that crit there, and does it stay asleep? It does stay asleep. So the rain finishes now. So that's that's it for the rain. And I think the combination here will be enough. Okay, Smog and just go for the same again. I mean, we could Volt Switch here and just get Rilla onto the field. Probably the better play is honestly just go on Thunderbolt into Incineroar, just getting rid of it that way. Because um, the chances are it will wake up this turn. It will. But the recoil, if it does go for Flare Blitz into that Aleki, um, onto the Rillaboom now, will be enough to not pick up the knockout. So it kind of it swings and roundabouts, it kind of works out all right for us. Rilla shouldn't go down to a Flare Blitz. Um, unless they target into the Amoongus. Here we go. Where are you going? Into the Amoongus. So, just opens the door for Ray to come back in. And we can finish off with a Dragon Ascent. So, that's 
perfect for us because it's all about the ray today, isn't it? It's all about the ray. 4 HP survival. I'm pretty sure that's probably one of the, the key calcs that uh, you look at, definitely. I know when I used to run a Solvest Ray back in um, 2016, that was definitely a calc that you looked at, but you had, there was different mechanics back then because you had uh, things like the airstream that you got from Mega Rayquaza that kind of reduced the uh, the ice weakness, which made Mega Ray even more powerful. So you could kind of calc a little bit against that. Protect Incineroar, what? Where did that come from? Well, we don't want to grassy glide here because we could chip a berry and it could just put the incinero out of range. We don't want this battle going on any longer than it should. A dragon ascent should be more than enough to pick up the knockout here. Uh, and well, wood hammer. We should outspeed the incinero with with boom. But who knows? This is a pretty offensive team that we're kicking off with today. So um, you don't know how my opponents EV'd everything. So we do pick up a win. Ray off to a good start in this one today. A very good game to my opponent. And uh, we'll move swiftly on, my friends, to game two of today's episode. Next, we have a Talonflame, an Indeedy Male, a Tapu Fini, a Giratina, um, a Grimmsnarl, and a Espeon interesting team especially with the giratina there uh, it's very cool not a pokemon you see too often here but what has my opponent got going on they got screen support potentially from the grim snarl gotta watch out for trick there but unlikely with the psychic terrain but you never know do you um then probably sucker put maybe sucker punch maybe sucker punch take advantage of the the giratina with weakness policy that's kind of what it shouts to me a little bit i think the sp and obviously with the psychic terrain that's a pretty scary mod. Uh, Tailwind on the Talonflame is pretty awkward to deal with. I think Incineroar makes a lot of sense here. We've got Taunt there. We've got Fake Out that we can take advantage of, especially with the things that are flying that are going to try and set stuff up as well. Um, do we want Ray's? good against the Giratina but we need to be in a good position I think we need to think a little bit more about a trick room mode in this game I think stack attack is extremely good here um what's gonna stop stacker I mean in prison is gonna stop stacker I think being able to overwrite the psychic train is pretty useful as well so that's what we'll lock in with I feel like the trick room mode here is gonna be super good for us Tapu Fini is a little bit awkward for Ray to deal with but I mean it they're not going to like taking a Dragon Ascent either way. So if we can get a little bit of chip onto it. Or if we can get the position where we've got Ray. Really boom out on the field. Then we can deal with the Finny pretty easily from that, that perspective. So see what they lead with. It is going to be the Grimmsnarl and the Tapu Finny. And uh, we are bringing our Ray. And our Incineroar. So. Hmm. I'm going to Moonblast. Are they going to Moonblast or are they going to go for a Calm Mind? I mean, we could potentially just launch a Dragon Ascent into the Finny just to get some damage off into it, you know? Um, fake out Dragon Ascent. Do I worry about the trick? I do worry about the trick a little bit from the Grim Snarl. I definitely do. Or the Lagging Tail as well. I don't really want to get Lagging Tailed um, onto my Ray. I hate lag and tail, and that would really upset me. But I'm going to take the risk. I mean, switching Rillaboom here for Ray, I think, is probably the better play. It, it kind of mitigates the lagging tail coming on to our Rayquaza, which we were so worried about, which is going to happen. But there we go. Here it is. At least Grimmsnarl isn't going to be able to do anything else now because it's got the Assault Vest and it's going to be pretty useless for the rest of this match. Um, we do have the lag and tail, which isn't ideal, but we do have extreme speed we can still take advantage of. And extreme speed here, pro is it going to be enough? It might be enough, you know. It could be enough. I think extreme speed probably gets the finny. Like I say, the Grimstar can't... <sighs> it is minus one. Okay, what we're gonna do is parting shot. We're gonna go extreme speed. I'm gonna rely. I'm gonna. I'm gonna believe in Ray here and go for the extreme speed into Finny, and say we can pick up the knockout onto it. 
which we can. There we go. We're going to take a spirit break, but the Grim Stall's minus one, so you've got to think. Okay, that's not too bad, and actually will be minus two now. So the spirit break isn't going to do as much damage, which is the only thing that Grim Stall's going to have uh, in its arsenal now with the assault vest that is just rudely stolen from us. Come on, we want stacks on the field, I think, right now. Because then we can set the trick room up and just set up a stacks kind of sweep from this point. Yeah. Okay. Jeez, minus two. It still does enough. You know, like, you forget how much of a, like, a monster Grimstall is at times, you know. It's a strong Pokemon. Right, well, what's coming in there? Giratina. Okay. Hmm. Now we could just protect. We could protect and we could switch into Incineroar. Um, or we could Trick Room and switch into Incineroar. I think we Trick Room and switch into Incineroar. We don't necessarily like... The only thing that would bother me would be like Will-O-Wisp on the Giratina into stacks, which would not be ideal. But the Misty Train is up, so I think we're, we're kind of all right doing that, really, aren't we? We're all right. We're all right. Let's see what this Giratina goes for. It goes for the Will-O-Wisp, but we are protected. By the terrain so that definitely is a bit of a mistake on my opponent's head and i mean i didn't even really think about it until we pulled the switch and i saw the the kind of tints of pink around the battlefield so uh okay did we just go at, i mean am i even worried about the i'm not even worried about the um not worried about the grim snarl one little bit we're just gonna rock slide and we're gonna go for a do we go for a taunt or do we go for part? I think parting shot into Giratina is probably a better play because then the Giratina cannot, cannot um, really damage, put the have the damage output that it, it kind of needs. Um, I love shiny Giratina though. It's a very cool shiny. It's a very cool shiny. Grimstall switching out and Indeedy coming in. Okay, so the parting shot the better option because you can get Rillaboom onto the field, overwrite that psychic terrain, which makes things a little bit easier for us, uh, especially if they go for uh, another Will O' Wisp here, which they're undoubtedly going to go for um, into stacks. <sighs> unless they miss, unless they miss. This is where you want your own Tapu Fini to kind of come in. Um, okay, I'll bring Boom in, get rid of that psychic terrain. But even Burnt, I think Stax is going to be able to kind of do enough to stuff like Ndidi and Grimmsnarl when they come back onto the field. Um, and the Giratina won't really... Okay, break and swipe. It's fine. Willara attack. Is this Giratina really pose that much of a threat? Because we just Grassy Glide and we Grassy Glide and Gyro Ball here. I don't know what speed Giratina is, but the, the indeed he's kind of like a bit of a sitting duck right now. I mean, it can go for. Do we just wood hammer? I think we just wood hammer just in case the Rillaboom comes. Uh, yeah, the uh, the Grimmsnarl comes in. So Gyroball should do a good chunk to the Giratina. Not a massive amount, but a good bit of damage. I'd worry there in case the, um, the, the Grassy Glide's not enough. Um, and then we just take unnecessary damage from the, the Ndidi when we don't really need to. I'm going to break and swipe again, which is fine. Because like I say, the Grim Snarl, the, the Grim Snarl we don't worry about. We, like, we do not care about. It's got Spirit Break and it cannot break Stack Attacker. So that's the that's the, that's the the thing. So we can just Wood Hammer and Gyro Ball into the Giratina this next turn. And with the moveset that we've seen so far, I would be very surprised if it's got protect so i guess bird breaks not going to be enough to get the red boom anyway um we just wood hammer while the grassy trains in effect and gyro ball and that should be enough to get the giratina and then the stack uh the the, the grim snarls pretty easy to deal with after that uh spirit break coming out not enough to get a good old Rillaboom. 
Um, and then, yeah, we can just grassy glide and gyrable. So sometimes the lagging tail does kind of, uh, the trick lagging tail does come back to bite you a little bit because it's not really worked out super well for something like Grim Snow here. Um, although, especially with like onto the Ray, Ray is just a great example of, oh, we don't want to gyrable our own, our own Rillaboom. What are we doing? Why is my controller doing this? What are we doing? We want to gyrable the Grim Snow. We want to grassy glide as well. I don't know what my controller's doing. I don't know whether my fingers just have like a mind of their own here. Um, and I'm just going, yeah, we just need to be self-destructive here. Minus two, so it should be enough. Not quite, not quite. We take another spirit break for our troubles. But um, if this takes us down, we get Ray back on the field and Ray can finish up once again with that extreme speed. Uh, it's going to be able to uh, to deal with Grimmsnarl. Even if it's got Sucker Punch, because we get the priority bracket a little bit higher. See, my fingers just don't want to listen to my brain right now. But at least we get two wins today, and that's pretty nice for a team that I think is actually really quite good and exciting. I like Rayquaza, um, and I've, I've really enjoyed kind of playing around with it. Um, so a big shout out to Johnny again. I think the Assault Vest is really interesting. Um, and I do think it's got potential in this format, especially where you've got quite a lot of weather teams. But you've got to say that like it's going to be harder against Zashin. Of course it is. Zashin with Play Rough as well, becoming way more popular. So that makes it even more difficult. Um, whereas it was already difficult with just Behemoth Blade, but you've got the like the stab attack on top of that, which makes it even more difficult. Uh, good game to my opponent. We'll wrap up now, friends, and uh, with the rental code and wrap up this video. Friends, here is today's rental team. Big shout out to Johnny once again. Thank you so much for providing the team for us and for allowing us to feature Rayquaza on the channel. It's been very exciting. I've really enjoyed today's episode and I hope you have as well. And if you do try the team out, please let me know down in the comment section below uh, what your thoughts are on Rayquaza and the team if you do try it, like I say. Um, and the, one of the reasons why I put this up, obviously being away for a week, um, I feel like I'm a little bit behind with everything that's been going on in the format and the meta game as well. So it's going to take me a little a few days to kind of catch up and get my grounding with everything. But in the meantime, what I wanted to do is end this video today and ask you all what kind of teams you'd like to see going forward. Would you like to see us concentrate a little bit more on rental teams from tournament winning teams, tournament performing teams? Or would you like us to just concentrate a little bit more down on the meta game, uh, build some more meta centric teams and see how far we can kind of push teams and feature just new trends that are kind of popping up every 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 day every week as we see the the format ever change you know in series 10 so that's a question for you today friends um and if you do leave a comment down below it is much appreciated because i want to provide content that you want to enjoy want to get some sort of benefit from enjoyment from and at least at the end of the day some sort of kind of um step forward in the the format as well to kind of help you out and things like that so if you'd like to see team building videos on myself putting things together to kind of how i would approach the format and things like that going forward let me know happy to do all sorts of things going forward with series 10 it's a fun format i am enjoying it and we'll be definitely streaming more of series 10 in the coming weeks as well as a nuzlocke that will be starting probably tomorrow night so thank you so much for tuning in friends have a great rest of your day i look forward to reading through the comments very soon and um, until our next episode take care of yourselves and i'll see you all later